Welcome, nerds and nerdettes. Have your name badges ready as we delve into this hilarious and heartwarming world of William Finn's Tony Award winning musical, the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. The 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee is a musical comedy with music and lyrics by William Finn, a book written by Rachel Scheinken, and conceived by Rebecca Feldman with additional material by Jay Reese. The show centers on a fictional spelling bee set in a geographically ambiguous Putnam Valley Middle School, where six quirky adolescents compete in the bee run by three equally quirky grown-ups. Now, the musical itself is based upon Crepuscule. That is C-R-E-P-U-S-C-U-L-E. Crepuscule. An original improvisational play created by Rebecca Feldman and performed by The Farm, a New York-based improvisational comedy troupe. After seeing the original production, Finn brought Rachel Scheinken on board and they worked together with Feldman to transform Crepuscule into a scripted full-length musical. Spelling Bee, as it would be named, was workshopped and developed at the Barrington Stage Company in Massachusetts. In February of 2004, a workshop was done in which a first act and parts of a second act were created. The script was completely fleshed out of the show, and the show itself was given a fuller production in July of that year. The Bee was ready for the pandemonium that would soon take over. The musical would officially open off-Broadway in January of 2005 at Second Stage Theatre. The production won several awards, among them the 2005 Lucille Lortel Award for Outstanding Musical and the 2005 Drama Desk Award for Outstanding Ensemble Performance. The 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee would transfer to Broadway's Circle in the Square Theatre in April of 2005, running for 1,136 performances and starring actor, comedian, and writer Dan Fogler, Filipino-American singer and actor Joseph Lana, Tony-nominated actor most recently seen in Ain't Too Proud to Beg, The Life and Times of the Temptations, Derek Baskin, five-time Primetime Emmy Award nominee Jesse Tyler Ferguson, actress and singer Lisa Howard, and Tony-winning actress Celia Keenan-Bolger. The musical would open its doors at the Arts Center in Melbourne, that's M-E-L-B-O-U-R-N-E, -E, Melbourne, in January of 2006, starring Marina Pryor, Australian actor, singer, and TV personality David Campbell, and Australian comedy actress and LGBTQ plus rights advocate Magda Zabanski. In July of 2015, the magic foot and everyone's favorite moment of the bee was restaged when the original Broadway cast reunited for a one-night-only 10th anniversary concert at the Town Hall. The concert was organized in tribute to original production stage manager Andrea Spook Testani Gordon, who passed away from cancer in 2014. The number one realtor in Putnam County and returning moderator for the Bee, Miss Rona Peretti, is a sweet woman who loves children, but she can be very stern when it comes to dealing with Vice Principal Panch, who has feelings for her. Her favorite moments of the Bees are the moment before it starts, when all the children are filled with the joy of competition before they begin to resent each other, how everyone has an equal chance of winning, and citing as an example that last year's winner can be this year's loser and vice versa. And when the last spellers go ahead to head for the top spot because it is so suspenseful and filled with hope. Now, after five years absence from the B, Vice Principal Douglas Panch returns as judge. There was an incident at the 20th annual B, but he claims to be in a better place now, or so we think, thanks to a high fiber diet and psychic analysis. The comfort counselor and ex-convict Mr. Mitch Mahoney is performing his community service with the Bee this year and will be handing out juice boxes to losing students. Putnam Valley Middle School welcomes Olive Atrovsky, a young newcomer to competitive spelling. Having made friends with her dictionary at a very young age helped her to make it into this year's competition. A returning finalist from last year, Mr. William Barfay, was eliminated because of an allergic reaction to peanuts. 
This year, however, his famous magic foot method of spelling has boosted him to spelling glory, even though he has only one working nostril and a touchy personality. Putnam Valley is also excited to welcome the youngest speller at this year's B, Logan Schwarzengrubenier. Being the most politically aware speller, often making comments about current political figures and the daughter of two overbearing gay fathers pushing her to win at any cost. The Bee would also like to welcome a recent transfer from Virginia, Miss Marcy Park. Marcy not only placed ninth in last year's finals, but she speaks six languages, is a member of an all-American hockey team, a championship rugby player, plays Chopin and Mozart on multiple instruments, sleeps only three hours a night, and hides in the bathroom cabinet. And of course, she's getting very tired of always winning. She is a total overachiever and unfortunately attends Our Lady of Intermittent Sorrows, where she is not allowed to cry. Our sympathies go out to her and her classmates. Which leads us to this year's final two spellers. Leif Coneybear, who is a homeschooler and the second runner-up in his district. Leif comes from a large family of former hippies where he learns how to make his own clothes. He spells words correctly while in a trance, and this year our sources tell us most of the words that he will be assigned are South American rodents with amusing names. Our final speller, Chip Tolentino, is a Boy Scout and champion of the 24th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. This year he returns to defend his title. And while Chip is relatively social and athletic, he expects things to come out easy, but always finds the puberty hitting at an inopportune moment. Now, fun fact, about a half an hour before the show begins, audience members in the lobby are given the chance to sign up to participate in the show as spellers. The registration form asks for name, occupation, hobbies, description of clothing, spelling ability, and age range. The interviewers look for people with no acting experience, unique names, traits, and backgrounds. The audience participants are taken backstage prior to the show and are shown where to stand when called from the audience and given instruction about what to do when called upon to spell. They are asked to request a definition of each word and its usage in a sentence and to attempt to spell each word rather than giving up. The final audience member to be eliminated is usually given an exceptionally difficult word that they are sure to miss with the word being belled as incorrect before the attempt is completed. During the performance, the actors sitting next to the audience participants periodically whisper hints about when to stand, sit, move in slow motion, freeze, or even hang on because the seating platform unit is about to spin. Fun fact number two, the musical treats the audience members as if they were the audience at the fictitious spelling bee. William Barfay periodically refers to an age-appropriate woman near the stage as mom. Chip is usually distracted by an attractive female audience member contributing to a misspelling and is also the first contestant eliminated, thus being forced to sell snacks in the audience in the manner of the refreshment hawkers at a sports event. Gang, this musical reminds us that we all have our own unique struggles and talents and that the journey of self-discovery is just as important as winning the trophy. Even if you can't spell dengue, even after hearing that it is an infectious disease carried out by mosquitoes and characterized by headaches, joint pain, skin rash, and severe diarrhea, or even hearing it in a sentence. When the pediatrician asked Billy to describe the symptoms of his dengue, he said, it's like there was a race out of my tushy and everybody won. Even if after all that, you still tend to miss the word, there's still a champion speller within us all. <laughs>